Ever since I was a little girl, I knew that I was different. I knew that I wasn't like everyone else. Every black woman has a journey and a story to tell. This is mine. I grew up in a small town in Ohio called Painesville, and it's about 45 minutes from Cleveland. My mom was 16 years old when she had me, and my grandmother helped raise me. My father was young also, and he died when I was six years old, so I did not have that experience of growing up with my father. So being that my mom was a teenage mom and my father not being around, I had a very different childhood. Because my mom was a teenage mom and because my father wasn't around, we didn't have a lot. I grew up with this mindset of limitation and not having enough and lack and not being able to get what I wanted. So we were on public assistance. We lived in public housing. We got food stamps. I grew up with it all, the government cheese and the powdered milk and the, the cereal that I didn't want to eat. And I always felt like that wasn't the way I wanted life to be. I always felt like, why does it have to be this way? I was a very inquisitive child as well. And I knew that there was a bigger life possible for me. And of course, being young, I didn't know exactly how that was gonna play out. And so I looked around me and I looked at my peers and friends and they were good in sports, they were good in math, they were good in science. I was none of those things. All I wanted to do was sit in a corner by myself and read books and write. I was doing my own books and tying them together with construction paper and yarn. And I just knew that one day I was gonna do something important with my life. That whole mindset led me to deciding that I'm gonna go to college, I'm gonna get a great job, I'm gonna have a great life. I went through this period of inquiry of how could I use my writing skills and my uh, love of teaching. I got jobs when I was in college writing grant proposals for nonprofits and that is what I ended up doing as my first career. The goal was to get a good job. That's what I had been taught, to get a good job and stay there as long as possible uh, because that is what you do to be successful. I ended up moving to Washington, D.C. from Richmond, Virginia, where I went to college, and I really built my career in D.C. as a nonprofit professional. I did fundraising, I did communications, I did um, so many things that helped me grow as a professional and as a leader. And I got to the point where I said, you know, I think it's time for me to up level in my career. And I started looking around to see what are some of the ways that I could do that. And so in 2007, I started this blog and it was an ugly little blog looking back. I had no idea how to make a website or anything to do with technology, but I set it all up myself and I started publishing articles and people started reading it. People started reading it. So as a result of my blog, people started inviting me to come and speak all over the country. And so I started having to think about how much do I charge to speak and figuring out all of those things as an accidental entrepreneur. And so I was using my vacation time to travel all over the country to speak at these nonprofit conferences about leadership and diversity and career development. And and it was great. I loved being out there. I loved sharing my message and my expertise and my story. And 
I did that for a few years until I came to a point where I had to make a decision. And so for me, I had in my head my grandmother who was saying, are you sure you wanna leave that good job? Because that's what I was taught, that you go to school, you graduate, you get a good job, and you don't leave that job. You stay in that job because you're supposed to be grateful for what you got. And in D.C., having a good job for me, being the age that I was, making $60,000, having um, great opportunities, having my own parking space, having five weeks of vacation time, was not easy to walk away from. But at the same time, there were all these other considerations I had to make. So what if it didn't work out? I was single. I didn't have anybody to fall back on. I didn't have family members that can bail me out. Um, I had a good job. And leaving that job meant that I had to stand on my own two feet. And that is what I did. 2010, January 1st, I officially became self-employed full-time and I have not worked for anyone since then. So the first year that I quit my job in 2010 was great. I had ongoing clients, I had replaced my salary from my job, and I was enjoying the freedom. I just thought I was on top of the world. Then 2011 came. 2011 was probably the worst year in my business because I lost one of my consulting clients and I wasn't prepared for it. I hadn't planned for it. I just thought they're just going to keep working with me forever. And so there were days in 2011 where, yeah, I was looking at the job boards. I was looking for open positions. I was putting my resume together. And there were days that I was depressed and there were days that it was hard for me to get out of bed. And there were days when I didn't take a shower and the dishes sat in the sink because I just couldn't believe that out of all the education that I had, all the experience that I had, that this business thing was not coming easily for me. My personal development journey really began back in 2007. I began having a bit of a quarter life crisis, as they say, where I was looking at my life and seeing how I had followed all the rules, I had gone to school, I had gotten to my career, I had checked off all the boxes, but there was still a part of me that was wondering, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing with my life? And so the following year, I decided to take a vacation to one of my favorite places, Hawaii. And it was very timely that I took that trip by myself because it had been a hard year for me. It was the same year that my father had passed away. So I was turning 25 and he was 25 when he died. And so I took this trip to Hawaii all by myself. I rented a car and one day I drove out to the North Shore and I was really thinking one thought. I could be dead by now. I could be dead by now. It was the year that my father had died in his life. He didn't get to see 26. And I kept thinking to myself, I could be dead by now. And I was thinking and looking out on the water and looking at the sky and the mountains, there was this message that came to me and it wasn't like a voice, it was more just like a message that came. And what it said was, you could be dead by now, but you're still alive. And that means that there's still work for you to do. Hi, it's Rosetta Thurman here from Happy Black Woman. Hi, this is Rosetta Thurman from happyblackwoman.com. Coming to you live from my iPhone. I to when I first quit my job in 2010, I decided to document my journey on a personal blog. And I called it The Diary of a Happy Black Woman. And it was really about my process and my experiences as I was becoming a, an entrepreneur, being self-employed. And I also shared about my experiences living in DC and what I was doing to really um, improve my own life. 
and people started reading that blog too. And there were actually more people reading my Happy Black Woman blog than any other uh, article I had ever written in my nonprofit. And so what happened was that Happy Black Woman became so popular that we started having meetups for blog readers in DC. We would just meet at a bar and hang out, connect, share our dreams and goals with each other. And then people started asking me to teach. And so I started doing workshops and then I started charging money for them. And that blossomed into this opportunity to turn Happy Black Woman into a business. And my next turning point was in 2013 where I decided that I'm going to shut down my nonprofit consulting business and work on Happy Black Woman full time. Since 2010, Happy Black Woman has grown from a personal blog of me just sharing my experiences of becoming a happy black woman to a global community of black women all over the world. Now I host events all over the world where I teach women how to really transform their lives. And what it taught me very clearly was that I could do anything I wanted with my life and no one could stop me but me. The biggest factor to my success has really been a mindset shift. It's been the decision that I made. The moment that I started to embrace who I was and start to embrace what I wanted, that is when I was able to experience all that I dreamed of in my life. Part of why I'm so proud to lead this happy black woman community is because it is filled with women who have made that same decision. The decision to stop pretending. The decision to stop settling. The decision to do exactly what it is that we want to do in our lives. And when it comes to your happiness, your success and your freedom, I have gathered an incredible tribe of women who want to see you win, who will never tell you that you're crazy. They will tell you that you're brilliant. This is the community that I've always wanted, a community where I can belong, a community where I can fit in, a community where people don't look at me like I have three heads. This is the happy black woman community. And if my story resonates with you, this is where you should be.